Hello and welcome to World Canvas from International Programs at the University of Iowa. I'm Joan Kerr and we're in the Senate Chamber of the Old Capitol Museum on the campus of the University of Iowa. Good to have you with us. This is the final program in our four-part series on teaching innovation. And tonight we're talking about teaching with technology. Technology is nothing new, of course, and the existence of 21st century technological aids doesn't automatically make teaching or learning any better. You have to know how to employ them in relevant and instructive ways. Well, we have two UI faculty members here in our final segment in the series to tell us how they're using new technologies uh, in their teaching. David McGraw is just to my left. He's a lecturer in the Division of Performing Arts. Nice to have you here, David. Hello, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And next name is George de la Pena, associate professor and chair of the Department of Dance here at the university. Hi, George. Thank Hi, you for John. coming. So I'll turn to, first to you, David. Uh, I know that you teach many topics, but among them, directing. And you have some uh, tools that you've developed to help students understand some of the complexities in, in uh, stage management, direction, mm -hmm. and so yeah. on. Yes. So uh, I'm the head of the stage management program, the graduate program. And one part of what a stage manager does is essentially working as air traffic controller for everything <laughs> that happens in a live performance. Mm. So whether it's in theater or opera or dance or the Super Bowl halftime show, there's a stage manager who's coordinating with 10, 20 different technicians. Uh, otherwise, you might see it as a conductor with all the mm -hmm. technical elements. Mm -hmm. But this can be very hard to train students. Uh, the high stress of putting them in front of 12 different people who are waiting for their next order. Uh, and we've tried it different ways. We've tried to simply modeling best behavior in the classroom. I would call out a sequence, and it has some value. And we've tried using video, where they'd watch a show, and they would practice calling all of the cues and using different communication systems. And there's some value in that, but oftentimes the student could learn the wrong way or kind of develop a bad habit because they don't receive any feedback. Mm -hmm. And so what we've developed is a simulator. Uh, the simulator, we were inspired by Guitar Hero or Rock Band or any of the <laughs> video games that let you kind of sing along that karaoke style. And we were inspired by air traffic control simulators. Uh, we took the two ideas, we put them together so that now our students on their own laptop at home in their dorm room at the library can watch videos taken from the vantage point of the stage manager, which might be multiple video screens. And then we use voice recognition software that allows them to call out the cues and within a quarter second accuracy, we can say whether that cue was early or late, if it was garbled in the communication. Uh, what they don't know when they start up is that we also have included errors, so that if a performer misses an entrance, if a light suddenly goes down, and then they have to troubleshoot on the spot. Uh, and that way they get their instantaneous feedback. The screen actually kind of changes color, uh, almost like a scoring system, uh, and they get to have that immediate assessment of their work, and then they become much more confident so that when they are in the live situation, they know that they can do the job and they can react more to the environment at the time. Wow. So why did you set this all up? How long have you been working on this? Uh, this has been in progress oh, almost five years. I'm very grateful. Uh, we received an Innovations in Teaching with Technology Award from the university. Uh, I was also very fortunate in that some of the programmers for Guitar Hero are based in Iowa. Uh, <laughs> and also that we were able to team up with an engineering class that really studied how the user interface would work. So the student logs into the program and it's a replica of a, the booth that a stage manager would occupy. And then all the programming controls and the voice recognition we've been able to test to see the most useful. And in some ways, we're learning how better to set up the actual real life booths based on what we've been able to gain from the student input. So there may be ways that, that you, you can just create a better working environment based on some we, of the things that We actually hope that happening. we'll be doing work ah, for our field, the yeah. live field. Tradition, mm -hmm. ambition, exploration, inspiration. You feel it when you step on campus at the University of Iowa. The energy and pride of students inspired by our history and excited about our future. When you join the Hawkeye family, you're a part of it all. Be a part of it. Be a part of it. Be a part of it. Be a, of it. Be a Hawkeye.
Show your Iowa pride. The Iowa Hawk Shop, where Iowa shops. The ultimate collection of Iowa Hawkeye merchandise, gifts, and apparel. Help support the University of Iowa. All proceeds benefit men's and women's athletic teams and student programs. The Iowa Hawk Shop, where Iowa shops. Show your Iowa pride. Call 1-800-HAWK-SHOP or visit www.hawkshop.com. Wow, now that's great. And you mentioned a couple of other things that you use, uh, little technological aids. Uh, one is a one is the smart pen, smart pen yes. note taking process, which I think is really cool. Right, and I would recommend this to everyone, and whether or not you're a student, uh, that there are a number of these new smart pens. LiveScribe is one of the brands that produces them, and the concept behind it is pretty simple: that there is a, a regular pen, but the camera is next to the tip, and there's a microphone at the top, and so that while you're taking notes you're also getting the audio recorded and it stretches along a timeline so that as you write a word, you'd be able to see, hear what's being said at that time. Uh, and a lot of people use it for regular uh, production meetings or any sort of staff meetings. What I do in my class is that for one of my advanced courses, um, no one's prohibited from taking notes. Some people really, that's the best way to process information. But what I've found is that for a lot of people, they think that is the first step or that's all they should be doing. And so I have a lot of students who are writing out notes instead of processing the information or engaging in the discussion. Uh, and so we rotate, one student per class is taking the notes for the entire group. Then we simply load that onto the internet. Any student then can get the notes for that day, can hear all the audio that happened in the room. So our notes look more like outlines mm -hmm. and the students can drill down and find that information mm -hmm. when they want to review it. But it lets them kind of step away and, and be more active and we can go in greater depth because no one else has to write out the dates yeah. that we're currently discussing or, or the yeah. formula. Boy, that's terrific. Wow. Well, so George, tell me what, what you use in the way of new technologies to help your dancers, your choreographers do the work they need to do. Well, uh, what has been a problem uh, that we've been trying to solve is the difference between feeling what you're doing and what it actually looks like. Mm -hmm. And so, um, from my experience in film and television, uh, I, whenever I would see some of the takes that were done, I would go, oh goodness gracious, I shouldn't do that again. And I began to refine many, many techniques uh, as a consequence. And so what it seemed that would be a good idea and which we were given a grant for from yeah. ATAC to uh, explore was to have a, a device with, which was very portable like this tablet here, and iPad, and uh, be able to film the student in the moment and to be able to show them what they were doing. So seeing is believing kind of a situation. So um, first, uh, we would get permission from the student, may I film you? Second, it would then, uh, we would do it without any instruction, and then third, the student would look at it, and so the student would give their feedback of what they thought they were seeing mm -hmm. and uh, try to solve the problem themselves, and then the additional interaction with the uh, mm -hmm. teacher to go one step further and here are the reasons why. Then we also got a wonderful app uh, from um, Apple that was uh, your anatomy uh, mm -hmm. that you can very quickly access on the iPad and you can actually show them the bone, the skeletal system, and the bones and the, the excuse me, uh, the muscles mm -hmm. uh, that are actually operating at that time. And it was extraordinary to see what that visual did for their thinking. Mm. The intricacy of the musculature was um, eye-opening to them. And uh, so they would engage those areas of musculature in a very different way. So this, it's, we've just begun it, and it's getting some very good results. And uh, we hope to also um, work with sports medicine to uh, be able to deal with a repeated stress injury mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and also uh, any type of 
uh, gait analysis that would help students reduce the, the uh, injury rate yeah. for us. Wow, wow. And how, how have your students taken to it? Do they, is there sort of an aha mm -hmm. moment when they see There themselves? is. And another great feature with this is the fact that after you film them, you can actually send it to them and they can observe it several mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a document for them that they can refer to and slowly work at embodying that correction yeah. and uh, training the muscles in such a way that they are tracking in the proper manner. Wow, wow. But that's, that's just a very basic teaching tool. Uh, what we can do with this in terms of our research, choreographic research and our mm -hmm. performance research uh, is, is extraordinary. Uh, in addition to uh, all of the gaming technology that is occurring. So this makes uh, creating a set that's fantastical so much more affordable. And for wow. dance, because we tour quite a bit in concert right. dance, uh, it's a, an extraordinary jump for us in wow. what we can, the environment that we can create this virtual environment, if you will, yeah, so, several so explain that a little more. So you may not be building sets and dragging them with you in a semi to some oh, location. Oh, in, in fact, that's, that's all, yeah. in, so many people are doing this wow. uh, uh, already. So we are also teaching the students to be able to uh, think in that manner. And the imaginative things they come up with in terms of the uh, set places, photographs, how they manipulate the photographs is extraordinarily artistic. Uh, in fact, I was just, uh, I noticed that David Hockney has a big exhibit over in San Francisco right now, and he does a lot of his new painting on an oh, iPad. Really? So it's a new age, and we are just sticking our toes in it now, mm -hmm. and very yeah. excited at what, what will happen. Wow. Tradition, mm -hmm. ambition, exploration, inspiration. You feel it when you step on campus at the University of Iowa. The energy and pride of students inspired by our history and excited about our future. When you join the Hawkeye family, you're a part of it all. Be a part of it. Be a part of it. Be a part of it. Be a, of it. Be a Hawkeye. Steals it away. She's got pretty. Instead, she'll go coast to coast and finishes with the right hand. Show your Iowa pride, the Iowa Hawk Shop, where Iowa shops. The ultimate collection of Iowa Hawkeye merchandise, gifts, and apparel. Help support the University of Iowa. All proceeds benefit men's and women's athletic teams and student programs. The Iowa Hawk Shop, where Iowa shops. Show your Iowa pride. Call 1-800-HAWK-SHOP or visit www.hawkshop.com. Well, and I know a year or two ago, uh, 
we did a project with ITS here on campus where there was joint choreography, a joint project being done with dancers in South America. Uh, do you recall uh, the, the project, which I thought was very cool because you were doing live real-time rehearsals through uh, a setup you had with ITS, and yet you were not only not in the same space, you were on another continent, but interacting with other choreographers and other dancers and then coming together at some point. Oh, well, that streaming capability is, is, has been extraordinary because we've, we had a choreographer recently who was in uh, Germany and uh, we were working on one of her pieces and she was able to uh, log in and observe That's rehearsal, right, yeah. give notes. Mm -hmm. It's been quite extraordinary. Mm. And that, that's just the small part of yeah. what's, what's being yeah. discovered that can be done. Hmm. Well, tell me about UIDEA. Oh, sure. So uh, one of my courses, we cover event management. So if you were going to do a concert or a gallery opening or a one-day civic event. Uh, and so, again, in the traditional setting, I would go through the logistics, the budgeting, the scheduling, insurance policies, everything else. Uh, and then what we decided to do was, again, we teamed up uh, this time with CETA, uh, which is a student uh, group that you can bring them into your class, and uh, they assist faculty in developing new innovative ways of teaching. Uh, and UIDEA is an online competition. So I have my class divide out into teams with the goal of creating a one-day event that would appeal to University of Iowa students. And they work through all the logistics and planning, then we move into marketing. They develop print advertising, online advertising, press releases. They develop their own commercial for their fictitious event. And then we move into social media usage. And we have this competition. It runs for two weeks each year in which each team is trying to gain enough votes from the general public. Uh, so again, kind of borrowing things from some on the television, reality TV competition shows. Uh, so call in and vote for your favorite. Well, they're going to visit our website. Uh, and so everyone thinks that their Facebook connection should be enough to win it. Uh, but no, you, you might get a few friends, but can you get hundreds or thousands of votes off of this? Uh, and so they find better ways of connecting with their audience. Are they actually providing the audience with what the audience wants? And are they making that strong connection? Uh, and so it really lets them experiment, do more experiments in the field, adjust their tactics as they go. Uh, better understand what they think an audience might want versus what the audience truly is perceiving from what they're being given. Uh, and it's a, a fun kind of competitive element to it. And it's, it's worked very well. We've run it now for three different years. One year we even went up against a, another class, uh, teamed up with a, a sports management instructor. And so again, we were all limited to one day, but who could get the most votes mm -hmm. for that? Mm -hmm. uh, and then we can look at the sort of the back end of it and we'll analyze how, where the different votes were coming from that we'll, we'll be tracking how much in Iowa City, nationally, internationally. Last year, we got onto three different continents in order to get votes into this competition. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think it allows the students to feel much more invested, much more engaged, but also for them to be able to start listening, uh, that not just what their perception is. And you know, with some of what George is discussing, that trying to move them from being a student to being a learner or a researcher on their own, that they shouldn't just rely on my grade to say that this was a good project, but were they able to get a large enough audience, an audience that would stay engaged? Mm -hmm. uh, and kind of moving them to, can they make their adjustments on their own once they've looked at the research, once they've watched the video of themselves, what is their assessor? Can we train them to be better assessors so they're not relying on a single authority figure who won't be there once they graduate from school hmm. and, and how they can handle the criticism? Yeah, yeah. This, this is also... Certainly. Yeah. One of the amazing things that I noted about any time somebody points a camera at you, your energy changes immediately. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> what does that mean exactly? Um, in, in the studio class, technique class, uh, the minute I lift this and ask permission, suddenly uh, their energy rate jumps to 85% <laughs> or 90, you know, and then uh, it's just such an improved uh, demonstration after which, mm -hmm. and that always shocks me, and I say, you, you know how, do you feel how much more you just did? How, mm -hmm. how much more focus you gave, how much, how mindful you were about what you were doing? And, uh, and it's this little, recording device wow, <laughs> that really transforms them. And, and for me to ask them, invite them to remember that on a regular basis mm -hmm. and make it their physical practice at all times, 
just makes the improvement happen so much mm -hmm. more thoroughly. Mm -hmm. Do you, uh, in the dance department, do you uh, deal with, your, with questions from your students about uh, the popularity of a certain kind of dance? Will I be able to get a crowd for this kind of dance? Are there courses within the dance department where you're looking at audience reaction, um, you're trying to uh, bring an audience in in the way that David has just mentioned? Is there any of that within the dance department? Many of our students mm -hmm. go to David's classes, uh -huh. thankfully, uh -huh. to yeah. get their certificate yeah. to have this kind yeah. of expanded sense. Uh, but also, uh, that is not necessarily our primary concern mm. in the Department of Dance. Uh, there's a lot of exploration of gender and perception of uh, who you are as a performer, if you will, yeah. versus just someone, yeah. and what is performance. So many things are being explored uh, in addition to mm -hmm. what is the audience feeling. Mm -hmm. And actually, kind of to tie off of that, that. Um, Sometimes the students come in and, and as your question was, you know, what will be popular, what will the mm -hmm. audience want? Mm -hmm. But for us as artists, how we can better inform our audiences, culture those audiences. And so uh, actually for that U idea, one team thought they had the winning idea. They were going to get a very popular band. They were going to spend all their budget on just bringing the band in. And surely that's what people would want. And actually the team that won that year, uh, they decided they were going to do a photography exhibit that the students would be the photographers, that you would be posting, in this case on Facebook, images that meant, what University of Iowa meant to you, and what would be the most creative ways of re-seeing the community, mm -hmm. uh, of what angle would really have that. And because the students who were voting really had the idea of how they would be participating, that it was theirs as well, then it, it gained that popularity. It wasn't something that was, what's the best kind of lowest common denominator yeah. entertainment format, but what was something that was going to matter in my life? And that's mm -hmm. how they engage with the art. Mm -hmm. hmm. And also with an intriguing perspective on it. So as you, as you are taking the shot, you are inviting them to see something in a new way yeah. through your eyes. Yeah. And that, that, is, that creativity is extremely important in the arts, especially here at the University of Iowa. It's a great value of ours. Mm -hmm. Tradition, mm -hmm. ambition, exploration, inspiration. You feel it when you step on campus at the University of Iowa. The energy and pride of students inspired by our history and excited about our future. When you join the Hawkeye family, you're a part of it all. Be a part of it. Be a part of it. Be a part of it. Be a, of it. Be a Hawkeye. Show your Iowa pride, the Iowa Hawk Shop, where Iowa shops. The ultimate collection of Iowa Hawkeye merchandise, gifts, and apparel. Help support the University of Iowa. All proceeds benefit men's and women's athletic teams and student programs. The Iowa Hawk Shop, where Iowa shops. Show your Iowa pride. Call 1-800-HAWK-SHOP or visit www.hawkshop.com. Well, it does seem to me that um, you know the way world the world seems to work these days is through some sort of media. You know, um, whether it's cats on a on uh, you know a viral video or um, a beautiful dance segment from Dance Gala. You know, these things are shared widely and. Um, I'm sure that all the students feel that we all want to look our best, we all want to do our best, we all want to be caught at our best, and I suspect there are even. Um, 
Do the students feel empowered to say to you, for example, if you've shot them um, at a moment where they're already in the virtual set you're going to be using, and it's, it's kind of as close to the real deal as it can be. Um, if a student thinks, oh, could we do this? Are teachers open to that, or is there a point at which, yeah? Very much so. Mm -hmm. Collaboration is one of the key things that we invite. Mm -hmm. uh, is it, we find, as, as so many of us uh, in the arts, that the young people have such great ideas, mm -hmm. but truly excellent ideas. Mm -hmm. And to invite them to really share that is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And it enriches the teachers and everyone. So there's your flipped classroom. Yeah. Right. The yeah. teachers are learning. Yeah. yeah. And we're using the technology to have more time for the humanity. Right? Mm -hmm. We're using it to maximize the time that we can interact with the students. Yeah. We're not moving them off. We're bringing them closer in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they're much better at this than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I can imagine. I can imagine. Gosh, so is, is there um, anything new on the horizon that you can share at this point? Is there anything uh, that you're working on that... I'm going to try one of these tiled classrooms that yeah. your other yeah. episodes have addressed. So I'm going to try it in the spring. Uh, and uh, I'm going to also use it for the assessment of what if we treated art as, as a lab course. And so how can we experiment within uh, and we're using some of the quick response systems, they're called clickers around campus, oh, yeah. uh, so that as we're watching different pieces of art, we can see how, as students, how they're engaging with it at different points in the process, uh, and just kind of breaking it down that way. I, mean, I have no idea if we'll be successful, but I think it'll be a great experiment, and I yeah. think the students will hopefully buy into that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, we are exploring uh, motion capture. Mm -hmm. We are exploring working with robots. And no we kidding. are choreographing for robots. We have a very exciting class with computer science. Uh, we received also a grant for that and have uh, purchased four amazing robots. <laughs> and uh, the movements that they can do are extraordinary. But we see very fun uh, potential yeah. artistic uh, things that we can do sure. with that new entry into our world. They're How here to stay, that? those robots. They are, I'm sure. Like what these robots look like? Oh, they're, they're about this tall, and they are, um, uh, it's not like they're R2-D2. No, they're, that was what I was wondering. They're a little more wondering. sophisticated yeah. than yeah. that. They're like a little person. It looks like a little person. No kidding. They're extraordinary. They're really extraordinary. Wow. We're very excited to be uh. um, introducing this as uh, in our concerts. That is so fun. So, so in the end, you would have your live dancers interacting Absolutely. with these choreographed so robots. So you have the, yes, the human and the robot. That's and, good. In addition to that, we also are, you know, the, the whole virtual environment thing is, we're just starting on mm -hmm. that. And uh, we, there are great, great possibilities with that. There are a lot of effects that we can produce with a, a technology called Isadora. Um, and um, it's, transforming how we are able to um, invite the audience to a new world. Well, how fun. This is great. Really good to talk to both of you guys. George Delpena from Dance and David McGraw from Theater Arts. And so nice to have you here. I really appreciate it so much. And this has been the fourth part of a four-part series on teaching innovation. Uh, I'm so grateful to all of our guests who were with us for these four programs in the series. Um, all of the World Canvas programs can be seen on UITV, on YouTube, iTunes, KRUI, and the International Programs website, international.uiowa.edu. We thank you for watching, and please join us for the next World Canvas, where we'll be discussing cultural memory and commemoration. For UI International Programs, I'm Joan Kerr. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>